Hey, I'm Dukes on Twitch. If you want to support the channel and greensunzenith.com, you can find my Patreon, merch store, and single store, where you can buy singles through TCG Player or Card Hoarder in the video description. If you want to get in contact, you can also find all that info in the description below for things like donation deck lists or just wanting to reach out. All right, let's get right into it. Yo, hey team, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Back today with Green White Depths. Very similar to the last league, I believe the only change we made was adding a Ramanap as a second copy of Life in the Loom. Obviously Ramanap you can green suns for, which is nice, being able to find that sort of effect. I think it's probably more powerful than the second copy, but yeah, I'm pretty keen to test that out and see how it goes. The one card that really impressed me in the last match was Lava Spur Boots, which Giving haste to these sort of creatures that we run is just pretty brutal. Also allowing to make Marat Lege on your turn and also swing with it in the same turn to play around, you know, sorcery speed, effects, etc. is really, really nice. So Lava Spur and I think Saga, along with Shadow Spear, which helps out in some of the sort of the Delver matchups, um, is where I'm at for, you know, the reason to run Saga. That's kind of a plan C if you have Marat Lege plan A. Reclaim a knight, be down plan B, and then having the saga plan is is still pretty nice. So happy to do that. That's pretty much it, honestly. I did change the mana base a little bit. I took out the second forest and added in a third copy of stage. I feel like two basics alongside loam and ramanap should make sense. So we'll see how that performs. Legacy League, play points. Nice. Game play. There we go. Make this a bit bigger. Hope you're all doing well. Obviously, this is the first stream since the banning of Mind Goblin, which is unfortunate. But I do like that it now is just the case that no sticker cards will make it into Legacy, which I think is where they should have been at the get-go, but lessons learned. Obviously burn some players as well though, especially those who were kind of what's the word? Enfranchised in the turbo Muxus deck. Really tough. But you still have not only Vile Goblins, but a brilliant resource in Eli aka Goblin Lucky One, so there are definitely there's definitely light at the end of the tunnel for all Goblins players. Right, student. Side chat. Steps look pretty good. Really want to see an opening with like a rec reclaimeth hands are great because he gives you that turn one threat. Mox Diamond starts as well, of course. Hmm. So this is coming like a slow, like, turn one swords, turn two green suns for Reclaim it, which I don't mind. We are up against the Yorion deck, so potentially death and taxes, which having the sword definitely helps. All right. So I don't think this hand really wants to accelerate into Dried Arbor, but the opening Reclaim is really nice, so I think he'll happy just to go Savannah into... Could fetch as well. Fetching for Dried Arbor doesn't typically come up against this deck. And also it not being a damage-based deck outside of potentially Orcish Bowmasters, this staying as a 1-2 for maybe one turn longer doesn't really come up, so... Pretty happy just to replay the Reclaimer here. DNC, I think, a really enjoyable matchup. A lot of interaction from their side, but cards like Sylvan Safekeeper can be pretty key. Alright, so there will be the Black Splash version. Binning a land pretty quickly as well, so obviously they're looking for some. Uh, 
some action. Hmm. So one thing to note here is that we do have Yav, get rid of Savannah, get Dark Depths, stage, we have it. But they obviously have the Krakus, so I think what we're going to be doing this game is building out our mana, getting to a stage where we can Green Suns for Sylvan Safekeeper, protect it, and then also protect Dark Depths. Most likely getting rid of three lands, one for Safekeeper, one for Dark Depths, one for Dark Depths. So I think we're just going to continue with building out here. The only awkward thing is if they end step put in a Mother of Runes, we want a Swords then we'll be able to hold up the Reclaimer. We also have the one step in hand. A lot of builds have moved back to just one copy of step because we do have the Echoing Deeps. So we're actually not going to be able to protect the Reclaimer. But what I will do here, because I believe that they had a sword, so they would have swords. So I'm just happy to fetch now in case they draw swords. I don't want to be caught in a position where I fetch and they use swords in response and we can't use the reclaimer. I'm not going to put them on like main deck opposition agents, so I'm pretty happy to try to reclaim it here. Two mana. Bowmaster. Maybe they have double Bowmaster? Okay. Annoying, but not the end of the world. Hmm. I honestly don't mind getting Saga this turn. Worst case is both Wasteland and like a Wisp effect to Wisp the Bowmaster to deal with the Construct. But then I'm pretty low down on resource as well. If I get Saga, it comes in with a counter, so on my turn I kind of just want to play a land and pass. Hmm. Maybe not just yet. I kind of like just getting Windswept Teeth, getting Basic Forest, Green Suns for Reclaimer. But Saga can also take over the end. They're down to two cards. Hmm. Hey, Kyle. Welcome. Hey, Granham, thank you very much. Let's just go for Saga. They have a pretty slow clock, which is good. And here we can try to just get some value out of Saga while their shields are somewhat down. Most likely to stage here. What's in the mug? Uh, a coffee made by my beautiful partner Raf, who makes very nice coffee. Okay, no wasteland. It's pretty great. They attack with everything as if they're happy to trade, so I'm happy just to take this. I think the saga's growing is probably the best thing that can happen. They're going to fetch it four mana. Here we hand. Flagstones is pretty sweet. Hmm. 
Hmm. Well, this is interesting. I think I like this, the boots a little bit. But spear does, does come up. Spear I can't equip this turn though, so I might actually just go for boots. Play the flagstones. There is a world that if I draw Mox Diamond, I could go Yabamaya this turn, Depths the next turn, plus Mox, which would allow me to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 mana, which is enough for Depths, plus also Green Suns for... Um, depths, plus also Green Suns for Safekeeper. They're ticking that vial up, potentially just in case they miss their fifth land drop. Which is a little bit scary as well. Okay, there's their fifth land drop. Ooh, that's pretty good with, um, with Caracas. Liberator. Okay. Hmm. I think here I'm happy to play the flagstones. We know one card is Yorion. See if they're happy to block with Warren. And then potentially bounce. The question is do I want to swords? They're at 12. Do I really care about it? So my, my plan here is probably to green suns for Knight of the Reliquary. It doesn't deal with the Caracas other than at instant speed getting Wasteland. Hmm. I think I'm happy for this. This one might just be Liberator take out the vial. Just to stop the ability of Yorion coming off that with the Caracas open. I was kind of scared of like Val to 5, Solitude, or Yorion then Solitude. Okay. Ah, oh, wow. Did I actually have the option last turn? No, I was one mana off. I was actually a little bit of mana off. I was nowhere near the ability to... 
uh, make lage, protect it with creature. That changes the math a little bit. Okay. And then we probably just make it now. And the flagstones is kind of two ways to save it, which is really nice. Thought sees. Hmm. So if they put in a Kaldra and swing with everything... Then I definitely take five. Block here, block here, block here. That should be okay. But potentially because of me wanting to sacrifice the flagstones, I should have left a, a separate white mana up, or else they can kind of force me to use the white, potentially before I want to sack the flagstones. Interesting. We have the step in hand. I was actually quite worried of uh, of Kaldra because Kaldra I don't want to block because that's five. And then even if I block two and two, I take two. So I have to lose the safekeeper if they put in the Kaldra. Alright, so this destroys this, that's fine. This targets me, that's okay. We will just save in case of our... In case of Solitude. They have, they have one card left, so actually it doesn't matter. And hey Panda, welcome, hope you're well. Step. Merit Lage. Pro White. Very nice. A few little things I could have done differently there, but I'm I'm glad we got to the, the mid game where we were able to deploy Safekeeper, have some lands to sack, and then obviously get him with Marit. Okay. Uh, so this is a matchup that I love, the Doorkeeper Thrills. Really, really good. Bajukabog, a copy of Depths. Pretty easy cuts. Um, the Endurances can be okay, but i much rather extra removal, potentially even a Force. Hey Tom, thank you very much. Always things I can work on though. Um, really like the Savekeeper, of course. That's kind of the the big role of this card is, is this matchup. It's definitely a path and a force. I don't think we want the Oof. I don't like Oof because it doesn't remove 
the say aether vials they can still tick them up and then get rid of rid of the ooze when they when they need to i don't mind having access to a force of vigor but i don't want multiple it could just be this potentially another path but path in the early game is pretty rough because the games get pretty long that pathing an early creature is obviously typically better for you but still them getting a land is a pretty huge bonus hmm could just be this and then we'll see what we'll see how we go but the doorkeeper thralls are what i really really want yeah vexing bauble is very interesting for those of you who haven't seen it i believe it is one mana artifact sacrifice it draw a card for one mana but then also has the static ability of if a player would cast a spell and didn't use mana to cast it counter that spell just pretty pretty brutal leds force of wills you revoke creatures uh hits a lot omniscience which is pretty funny if you if they put in omniscience and you put in this little little bauble i don't like this hand because i feel our opponents typically win through stoneforge and this hand doesn't have a great way to deal with stoneforge so pretty happy to mulligan pretty happy to keep this uh we have really good threats especially with flagstones um, I'm happy to bottom the forest here and probably just go fetch it up with the windswept to get my mana pretty stable in the early turns. Punishing, very cool to see you. Hope you're doing well. Always love catching your streams during the mornings that I work and want just that little bit of, little bit of punishing in my life. Yeah, I think just because of like the classic kind of Delva Bolt Wasteland, Swords Wasteland is pretty terrifying here as well. Four main ditching sphere. Yeah, well, it does very similar things. It just taxes so many cards. All right. Really strong start. And what you should expect out of DT. Term on Vile, turn two stone forge, most likely Kaldra. Just keep that, that beat going. Uh, Doorkeeper throw would be a great draw here because it, will, it would allow us to. Uh, stop the germ from triggering on the Kaldra. I even thought of Tower of the Magistrate for this league, but couldn't find room in the board. Potentially over the extra force of vigor. Honestly, in this spot, I might just be getting Saga to try to go towards um, Shadow Spear. Yeah, because right now we're on a three turn clock. It's pretty huge. This also allows me to reclaim it this turn and hold up. Saga. I mean, Flagstones is a pretty sweet draw, but is it worth playing the other Saga in case of Wasteland? The issue with playing Saga this turn is uh, we wouldn't have to use it to make the third Saga. I'm actually pretty happy to go Flagstones, play Reclaimer, hold up Saga, or potentially hold up Reclaimer here as well, and probably not attack. If they're pretty aggressive on the wasteland, we can just sack it. Opponent keeps. 
I wonder if they respond to the, if the saga gets to three, if they respond with vile, thinking we have something like Pithing Needle. I mean, a Flickwiff just does it here. Flicker the creature with... the Shadow Spear. And then just go for it. Recruiter. Oof. Probably just getting Lauren here, especially with the Caracas. They get the wisp. Okay. Same deal. Very tricky spot. But I think it is worth making the saga. Potentially they go to flicker the construct token. And we can have Sajiri step online. Hmm. We also have boots, but boots don't do a whole lot. Knight would be a 4-4. Sadly, we don't have Maze of Ith. They don't respond. That's really interesting. Play the other saga. Get in with these two. Maybe that's a bit too aggressive, because we are tapping this most likely. Uh, unless I just flick the recruiter. Yeah, I think for that, like that value is just too much. Like it's just, yeah, there's not much we can do there. But you can definitely see there as well, like not having an answer to Stoneforge completely changes the game because it really puts you on a fast clock that this deck, other than maybe Swords or Path, it's going to have, I guess, in the Doorkeeper Thrills, a very hard time against. I think just because of that, we'll, we will have the extra path. Potentially the Moxen. Like, the card disadvantage does add up. We do have the Loam, but... Really want Doorkeeper, and we do have it, which is nice. We'll definitely keep this. Having a second one is pretty sweet as well. But obviously, no answer. Haywire Might was definitely a consideration as well. I think in my last talk, I did say Haywire Might over the third Force of Vigor. Okay. Take one throw. Pretty happy just to get basics here. Forest, plains, pass. I could just upkeep it, but I'm pretty happy to try to get this into play, just to keep 
my turn progressing. Uh, they know about the savannah, so I will play it. Do they? One, two, three, four, five, six. They do know about it. Ah, click the eye. I never knew. I never knew that we had an eye as well. I thought it was only them. There we go. Interesting, they kept Gadok Teague in. Maybe they didn't have enough cards to take out. But yeah, sadly our thralls are gone, so best top best top deck is obviously a removal spell. We did add in a path, so sadly not the one we want there. I'm gonna play the Raman up and try to get some value off it. Yeah, Thoughtseize, Sword, Solitude, Stoneforge. Really, really strong. Okay. Probably don't want to saw a path until they attack with the Cauldra. Like this is the exact situation where they've missed land drops for three turns and now I'm pathing a creature. Potentially Dismember is just better in that slot. Obviously path has a lot more Um, across the board, but... I don't want to get the Dried Arbor just because of Liberator. Play Windswept. Attack with both. If they have a Batter Skull, we're all good. I guess we do actually have Shadow Spear, which allows us to get through the Cauldra. I wonder if, no, I don't think Veil is worth it just because it's only Thoughtseize that really hits us. We don't really care about anything else. I 
Like Bowmaster's annoying, but not too bad. Okay. I'll put my draw step on now as well because if we want to fetch up Saga we can do a draw step and then get that extra trigger on main phase also these fetches can only get dried up that's the only card left at the target which is kind of funny. Oh, they pitch a stone forge for this. They really want to get that knight off the field. Which does make sense. We actually can't get dried up at either because they're a containment priest. So I think crop rotation is probably our best draw. With zero cards. Try to get a saga going. I can't even play this, which is pretty funny. They can make this bigger, so we will just pass. Flagstones at this stage doesn't actually get anything either. <laughs> great attacks here. Hmm. Look at his dead. Tough. Definitely a tough one keeping up the value of DNT. Alright, on the play, which is nice. Uh, a pretty sweet hand. We have like turn one reclaimer, turn two flagstones. Happy to keep this. One piece with Ramanap, which is cool. Too sure we're up against. Boots in the open is kind of sweet. If we can keep building out our mana, play some creatures and protect them. Would love to see a fair land across from us. Scalding Town's pretty fair <laughs> these days. Unless it fetches underground sea, then it's a bit of an issue. Okay. All right, Delva. Which thankfully here we do have the swords for which is always nice I 
could take the draw step off for now. Most likely pretty happy to untap and swords their creature to play around days. We don't really have a great plan next turn anyway. Ponder before a DRC is also great. They could also be thinking crop rotation here. They will have Delirium here, though. They chose to shuffle. Wow. Windsup's pretty sweet. Hmm. I'm pretty happy to play around days and also play the ramen app the turn I can actually get back something as well. This could also just be a 5-5 five, five Merc Tide. Seven cards in hand. Okay. Force is fair. There goes one days. Liberator. I think sadly here it's a case of playing the second flag zones, playing the remap around days, kind of allows us to play around days the rest of the game if it stays alive. Tells me next turn we can swing for five with the Liberator, which is pretty sweet. Which does currently beat their clock. Another sword is pretty sweet. Wow. Play the land. I could thin. I don't mind going wide as well with my mana a little bit. And I believe there's only one more left. There's only the planes left. We haven't seen an underground sea yet, so... Potentially there's, there's a world where we go and get Dried Arbor, but I think this is okay.
Well, Loam's fine, but not great. It does get us closer to stage though. So potentially I do want it. Depths of three mana is always nice as well because it kind of resembles, I guess they know about these two cards, but it can resemble. Something else. Delva Ponder. It's definitely interesting with our mana as well because potentially loam actually isn't the best way to find stage because crop rotation uh knight reclaimer green suns are all valid ways to find stage hmm jittery welcome looking forward to seeing your legacy in a few weeks So now the Trap Breaker flips, but we can attack with it pretty easily. I mean, stage would be sweetier. Um, no. Okay. I get it. Hey Gorbatch, thanks for the follow, hope you're well. Reveal a force, that's pretty good. I probably need to fetch it just for dried arbor. Block the questing druid. Point encounters off because this is definitely going one or two ways in the next two turns. Knowing about the force means I definitely don't want a loam now. Oh, tough. There's a world where they don't have the blue card in hand. That's fair. I do still have a turn, I believe. Thanks to Lava Spur, especially. I think maybe the attack from me last turn just wasn't needed and potentially the double uh, double block on questing druid was better.
could not block quicker. Hmm. No. Block. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Just maybe. Block here. They've only used one bolt so far. I wonder if they find a find a bolt. At least this doesn't have delirium, so it can't block. So it's all up to this draw. We can try, but it might not be enough. I think we're actually one short. One. Yeah, we can play a land, but we can't equip the boots. We would need a Yav, I believe. Two mana. This doesn't have for mana. Close. Quick think. One, two. Yeah, even if we play a flagstones, we don't have a land left that gets there. Hey Ben, hope you're well. Good to catch you. Nothing. Yeah, sadly, so close. Two mana. Use it to make the dark taps, but can't. Yeah. Tough. The parts are good. I don't mind the choke and the endurance and the soul guide. Outland. Hey, Sahar. Very cool to see you. Um... I don't mind dropping a knight and the safekeeper. You as well. I actually just booked a, a trip to Europe, so I'm very happy going to Germany, Austria, Italy for about three weeks with the better half of this relationship in my beautiful girlfriend, which is very nice. Uh, 
Um, like, I don't mind going down on crops as well, especially against a force deck. Yeah, ramen app's always tricky. I, I don't mind the ramen app as just ways to continue getting back um, dark depths. Like, especially if they're aggressive on wastelands early on. Pretty happy with this. Turn one, Savannah Dried Arbor. Thank you very much. But yeah, I, I can definitely understand where ramming up might just seem so so slow. Too kind, Brad. Thank you very much. I think it's Brad. Sh surely it's Brad. Don't call me Shirley. Yeah, the issue is if they don't bolt us or bolt our creatures, then they typically end up bolting us, which sucks. Get a flyer in play, hit a few threes, and then finish us off. So having some bolt targets is typically relevant. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty happy to go with Saga here. A little bit risky if they have a Wasteland on the Savannah, but... Being able to hold up Sword this turn around Days is pretty sweet. Worst case is Wasteland on Savannah, change phase. Oh god. <laughs> Interesting. Delve is always a tough one because I don't really care about it, but I also just like controlling the board. That's nice. That's actually really nice because it allows us to get Reclaimer as a 3-4 around days. Opponent potentially doesn't have backup mana and wants to see if they want to force this if they find it with Brainstorm. If they're going to Brainstorm end step with this mana open, they might as well Brainstorm now and potentially find a reason to force this. Okay. One thing that's kind of nice here is that Yavamai is just such a good draw, especially with Endurance. Wow, allowing us to untap. That's pretty huge. Pretty happy to try to jam the knight.
Force of Negation Brainstorm. I'm also happy to play the depths here. There is a I I don't think there's a world where they tap off the wasteland to cast the questing druid, but you never know. I feel like they wouldn't. Wow. Well now I'm very happy to play the, the depths. Unholy Heat isn't online just yet. Interesting. So they kind of prioritize the questing beast, <laughs> questing druid, sorry, over going after our green mana. Okay, there's the green source for questing druid. Hey Bion, thanks for the follow. Hope you're well. Interesting, so they're going to hold up the wasteland here potentially. Also a small thing, but if I get rid of this savannah, I turn off submerge. Which has been seen play in some sideboards. Okay, get it off the field. And surgical in depths, wow. That's fine. I think here it's just going to be you know, one card left. The issue for them, obviously the game's not over, but Dark Depths is only one way for us to win. Having a 5-5-9 to play is, is pretty nice here. Hmm. I think in this case, I'm happy just to float green, sack this. Get the Yav. Cast an Endurance. Hit them. And then probably just pass here. No flip. It's pretty huge.
DRC's fine. They have one card left. Pretty happy to take the hit here from Questing Druid. And then untap into his path. I don't really run it, want to run into days. A land would actually be pretty welcoming. Lava Spur is pretty sweet as well. I could just actually make nearly. Hmm. Yeah, let's go path this. Play boots. Equip boots to endurance swing. Probably equipped to nine, actually. They take it. Okay. And holy heat. Thankfully in this situation doesn't do a whole lot. Pretty happy here to attack with both. And then see what they do. Pretty fortunate. Then one card left is Unholy Heat. Second main Unholy Heat. Interesting. Okay. I think I'm pretty happy just running this back, but I will go to the bathroom quickly, so I'll be back. Uh, I'll be in around the start of September and middle of September. Not too sure on inner Europe travel dates just yet.
Nice. Alright, let's do it. Uh, pretty happy with this. Tomon acceleration is really nice. Kind of rough here, like wasteland into path, but that just happens. Dismember against this sort of deck is obviously a little bit tough because A, it doesn't always hit Merktide. It might not always hit Questing Druid either. And the four life can be pretty brutal. Okay, so now we kind of have the depths coming, which is nice. Hey, Maltu, welcome. Hope you're well. Let's go fetch. I'm just going to go for... Hmm. Do I really care about Wasteland? A little. Yeah, I don't mind just getting the mana right. I am going to get rid of the depths here. I think it's the weakest land. And then honestly, I, I could just hold up path here around days next turn wasteland makes it three which turns reclaimer into a three four which is kind of nice so they're going to bobble themselves and do a bit of a trick because if you see the top card when you untap you get to stack these so if it's an instant or sorcery you can stack delver first which they're doing if it's not you can stack bobble first draw and then take a blind flip on the delver brainstorm So here I'm pretty happy just to path, get it off the field. Interesting they didn't brainstorm in response and get the free shuffle, but maybe they have other plans. They shuffled. Okay. And no backup creature. That's pretty sweet for us. Ooh. Hmm. I really like playing Reclaimer now. Holding up Wasteland. And then next time we can play Endurance around Days. I don't think right now that Wasteland's doing much by cutting them off a color or a land. It's doing much more for us. Wow, opponent's also four minutes like down on the clock. I did not expect that. Especially when you're streaming and you're talking. <laughs> you're just doing random things. You're thinking random thoughts. It's always weird to see an opponent behind on clock compared to you. Like for seven minutes, I could I could go make a toasty. There's a lot of things I can do with nine minutes. Wow. Damn. Merktide would be an issue. There's definitely a consideration of if they fetch after the brainstorm. We could potentially pitch the Endurance. But... Wow, nothing. That's very interesting. Another Mox. I think the land is better than the Mox here. Especially with it being Stage. Um... Now I'm happy to cast the Endurance Sorcery Speed. A Force. 
Now I'm happy to Wasteland Volk. Turn this into a 3-4 and get in for 3. I guess they could have Unholy Heat. Or Questing Druid. Okay. Put a Delta Surgical. Okay. Again, Surgical I don't really care about. The worst thing it does here is make this Reclaimer potentially a 1-2 instead. Interesting, such a cool in depths again. Another reclaimer. That's pretty sweet. Now we just hold up getting flagstones. We still have the Sajiri step as well. Ben, I back you. I back you with your four color loam. You can do this. What are they going to do here? Blue, red. They're just red. Meltdown. Okay. Here we go to 15. Kind of like just swinging twice and potentially green suns. I think that's a winning line. at pitching submerge wow pitching submerge as well i mean you could just submerge what we get maybe not Just to not use Punter's ability. Yikes. Ooh. 
little too late. Tough. Really tough. Yeah, maybe uh maybe the thought was once earlier on for Bajuka Bog and try to find that or just bog them. Keep Merktide off the field. A little bit tricky. Tough. Definitely a matchup where I, I do like the Abzan version of Depths where you have Bowmaster to take care of things, especially even being able to take care of Questing Druid as a 1 1, but otherwise it can be a little bit rough because it doesn't do too much for the actual game plan of Depths. But also, it's a pretty good card, so I can see why people do want to include it. But yeah, path so far has been pretty pretty tough. A card that I'm typically pretty bullish on, just because it doesn't really care about the toughness of a creature. But maybe dismember. For one mana removal, it's it's always tricky. Like even pick your poison's pretty tough, because typically a lot of decks have multiple creatures and it gives them a choice. It's so like a flip Delver or an end Merktide that can just get rid of the, the Delver. But hey, hopefully we can finish this off in a positive way. Maybe get the next three. Hmm. But yeah, I do like the thought of like uh, taking out the Force of Vigor for Haywire Might. Oh, a two lander, but we are on the draw, so I don't mind it. Especially with the Excavator. Interesting. A green source or a white source of the top would be pretty sweet here. Nice. Just go for Savannah. Play our own Reclaimer. The power of Mox Diamond. Tabernacle, interesting. I'm pretty happy with that. Now we just get to hold up the Reclaimer. I'm happy to get rid of the 
stage here. Get flagstones. Swords is fine here because we have the uh, the ramen up just to start getting some some value. Hmm, I think stage here turns on a little bit. Hey deck tab's really interesting. Map. Bog us. Okay. That's a good reason to get back the windswept teeth, is that then you have something to get back. I thought they might just have the bog with reclaimer. Swords isn't too bad here. question is would they play can sack the flagstones to replay it that's pretty sweet you know what let's let's go with that <laughs> this get rid of this savannah play the flagstones love it that's a gray line My only thought was, uh, by not playing the safekeeper, we hold up three mana to copy a saga if they go and get that with map. We can still upkeep copy, but we don't get the additional construct okay Attack with both. Yeah. Which can be pretty tricky. Thankfully the sagas could, shouldn't take over the game too much. Especially thanks to this endurance. Now they have a stage. Yes. Wasteland? No. But that's pretty cool. Oh, this is a interesting. They have one card in hand, but we have the safekeeper as well, so I think we just go for it here. Let's let's be honest. Yeah.
I mean, they could still have Needle off uh, Saga, name Safekeeper, and then have Interaction. Also, for those of you playing at home, for Tabernacle, which says destroy this creature unless you pay, Merit Lage is indestructible, so you don't need to pay for it with Tabernacle. That's true. Actually, in response, yeah, that's actually a great point. So I think... Uh, Maybe just in response to these triggers, I'll save for this turn to make sh make them have to have some sort of sorcery speed. Oh, instant speed. Especially with the flagstones, that's a pretty free get. That's very cool to hear. Just one of those small things can definitely add up. Hey, Aratinga. Thanks for the follow. Hope you're doing well. They get another Mox Diamond, so maybe they don't have said get their own Dark Depths. Make their own 2020. Okay, game on. That's pretty cool. So we have Sajiri Step and a lot of outs to it, which is nice. Have a little bit of a stalemate here, which is kind of fun. Um, so let's tap like this. No. I said no. <laughs> yes. Yes. Ooh, that's pretty good. Um. Yeah, I mean, we're just going to go and get probably Knight of the Reliquary just because it's a large creature as well. So potentially here, I don't even want to play. I guess I could have Echoing Depths come into play as a Urza's Saga. That's kind of cool. But unnecessary. I think right now it's just get a Knight into play. Non zero cards. Yeah. Honestly, could have played the land from the bin, but I like that a knight is just a little bit bigger than these constructs. But I don't think that matters either, so I think, yeah, I think that's actually just incorrect. Oh, I do have a swing as... Ah, uh, there's no point, because it's indestructible, so even though I'm at 22 and can take a swing... Necessary, but Sajiri so step. There we go. All right, for this sort of matchup, I do like the forces and the endurance. Uh, I also don't mind switching two parts to two swords, and that's just because we're winning through combat damage. I honestly don't mind taking out an extra swords. 
There's nothing worse than having to swords of merit lage. Typically lands plays like one basic forest, so I think this is pretty good. Collect oof. Meh. Um The takeouts are interesting. I don't mind taking out at least one depths. If not two, and then just relying on like the fair plan. Um I do like the mox diamond, so I'm actually gonna take out all four swords, bringing the two parts. We have Force of Vigors to answer the Sagas, which is always really nice. Liberator, Safekeeper. Yeah. Mm, maybe not. Safekeeper, I find, it's just a little bit too hard to invest mana into it, as good as it was potentially there. I'm not going to be winning through Dark Depths anyway, so. Shadow Spear can come up, but it's really only against the really fast starts, which I hope we have the Force of Vigors for. Off, uh, off Saga. Mana's a little bit tough here, but we do have Reclaimer. We do have Endurance if needed. So on the draw and up a game, I think I'm pretty happy to take, take, take a spin with this. Did not just did not expect to see that card. I don't think we saw blue. Did we see a trop? We did see flooded strand, which I think gave away that they're probably more than just like flooded strand in a deck that typically wants green mana, and obviously that being a non-basic forest, basic is pretty yeah maybe the giveaway that we should have known about. Oh, I'm actually happy about this. Go and get Savannah. Hell yeah. A land of any kind. Nice. I think here we're just holding up the Endurance instead of playing the Reclaimer and also holding up uh, our own Reclaimer. Yeah, this deck looks really cool. Nice, that's pretty huge. Okay. I mean, the boots kind of means that like we could go off next turn. We need an extra land. So let's go Reclaimer. Equip boots. I mean, honestly, I could just attack with everything and then Green Suns for another Reclaimer. I, I like holding up a Reclaimer here as a just-in-case. So 
this is five mana flashback. Flagstones. I guess I could have also got Echo there and copied Saga. I think that's probably a little bit better. <gasps> oh, we could even just Knight here. That's pretty nuts. Play flagstones, keep this one. It's a little bit rough if they have their own endurance. I didn't even think about that. I think in that case, we just attack with these three and then hold up the knight for Sejiri step if needed. Yeah. There's also a world where we can rebuild. We can go and get Wasteland and Wasteland ourselves and keep the Reclaimers alive. I think that's best. I think we're at a stage where we don't really care about the lands that we have. Um, quick think. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's Wasteland ourselves. Wasteland the flagstones as well, and that way we get a land back. These become three fours again. Get a flat. Yeah, there we go. Phyrexian on life. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Um, I don't want to play this. Casey said, there may or may not be solemnities. Just still I'm saying, in fact, easy, yeah. I am going to play the Depths. And I am going to attack... One, two, three, four. Hmm. I don't mind trying to get them down to zero. Because is that how it works? You put them to zero and then you deal them 10 damage, which would be 10 infect. <laughs> this is very cool. Okay. They have one card left. Yeah, tough.
well. I did not expect to see that. That's a better one. Alright, we're on the board. We're on the board, and that's really good. That was very cool. Hey, Casey, that was very sweet. I, I, sadly, I don't think we got to see what your deck does. And I feel like our deck just has a great, um, a great matchup against that style of deck anyway. So, uh, if you do stumble, the, our deck's just gonna obviously jump on that. But some of those cards were very cool. Like even Savine's Reclamation. Savine's, like, Thing in the Ice. I think it's the first time I've actually seen Thing in the Ice in Legacy. That, so that's a little tick, which is very cool. Uh, is there anything that combos with the Cephalid? Do you play... I, I assume you don't play Leovold. I assume you don't play Bowmaster. No Narset. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's very true. Alright, this is probably going to be... Th Four or five color control. Or beans. Okay. Just value induced it. Doomsday ho hosing. Love it. Love it. Sadly, this is a matchup where I really like to get on the board early, and we are not getting on the board early. But at least, like, Teferi didn't come into play there. I guess even next turn, Teferi's pretty, pretty tough. But they shuffled with their library really quickly with the Ponder. And that's very interesting. Happy here just to get the Savannahs out of the deck. This is another matchup where Green Suns for um, Safekeeper is really strong. I'm also not going to play the Knight here. I'm going to hold up the Endurance because I would love for their first removal piece to go towards the Endurance. That potentially next time we can... Oh wow, I did not think that they were going to be a Wasteland deck. At least if they had Loam, they can't hit this Wasteland. A lot of card draw. Oh, but no removal. Interesting. Okay. Now we're pretty happy to try to get Safekeeper online. Also free here with the flagstones, which is pretty sweet. And then having the backup flagstones is even better. No instep fetch as well for like a source plus shares is pretty huge. Correct, only one more planes. That's actually a great point. Wow, nothing. Maybe they're trying to build towards Terminus? 
think some of these decks still are in Terminus. Claimer. I don't want to put too much on the field, but I do like getting something in play that gets us access to more things. Ah, uh, dress down. Yes. That's fair. Chose to shuffle again really quickly. I do have a stop on, but I should have responded to the draws. <gasps> I didn't stop. I just I the stop is on. It's at stop. That's tough. Wow. Uh, I guess we take them off green, I think is worthy here. Red's also interesting, but I think green turning off like loam, potentially other up the beanstalks. They didn't force the sword, so I assume they don't have force here. Surely the Merc Tide's like a good... Wow. Interesting. I really thought they would have protected the Merc Tide. Tried to close this game out a little bit. Pretty happy to hold my hand, maybe play the Caracas, but otherwise just keep land drops going. Really? <laughs> okay, if you say. What do we have? Outland Liberator as a way to get rid of these? That's gonna be a little bit tricky, especially with so many cards in hand. I don't think it's gonna be able to flip. <laughs> or at least attack flipped and trigger. Her is fine. I'm actually pretty happy to see if we can just. Allow them to replay it. Hmm. 
Mince closes the game out pretty quick. Yeah. Um, the Veils I like, the Soul Guide, Teague, Forces, Endurance Choke. I like a lot of these things. Knights can come down. Loam, I don't mind. Fog, Caracas. I could see Adabs coming out. Saga's pretty good. Crop can come down. Swords can come down. They do run Merc Tide, so maybe just three. Maybe not. Maybe not Soul Guide. Shadow Spear. Maybe just two forces. Maybe just two endurances as well. Dress down's the big threat. Loam with the Moxen is, is nice. Some sort of Saga start with the Moxen. I don't... I wonder if they bring in Meltdown or not. Hmm. Alright. Happy to keep this. Terminal Reclaimer. Wasteland. It's pretty nice. That's very interesting. Hmm. I actually don't mind Wasteland, Green Suns for Dried Arbor. Keep my mana going. Okay. Not getting forced is always nice. Next turn we potentially have Ramen up get back wasteland. Would love to see a green land into once or well, up the beanstalk. Cool. I'm probably taking them off green here just because of loam. I'm just getting in with little chips with reclaimer. Interesting. Maybe they want to dress down. No. Oh. Um. Hmm. This is in draw step, so I can't get the extra mana to force. I think that's okay. Hmm. What do I think about getting a safekeeper here? I don't mind that. Try 
try to protect that uh, that wasteland. Stifle. Okay. Now we also have crop open for Sejiri step to protect, which is kind of nice. I think because of that, I'm not open to using Reclaimer here. So the draw triggers, this comes down, it targets, and then what we can do is force these two in response. Now this does nothing. Nice, and then we get back to Wasteland. Hmm, maybe I do want the extra force. Could see me going down on a land. Maybe not. Cut a plow, yeah. Like Merc Tide's annoying, but mm. Yeah, they'd already used two forces, so I thought that force of ego was most likely getting through. I also don't mind the thought of um, Soul Guide. Not enough action in the early game here that I'm pretty happy to mulligan it. Okay, pretty happy to keep this. Bottom and Endurance. 61 special. I do see most, a lot of builds these days for green white playing 61. Typically you'll see like a Maze of Ith. Sav, okay. Uh, honestly, here, I kind of like Flagstones pass. And the next turn, we can Green Suns for Reclaimer while also holding up Veil of Summer. I don't think there's any reason to show the Mox Diamond just yet either. There's no reason to hold up the Veil. No green from them, which is pretty huge. Ooh. All right, so let's cast the Mox. Pitch the stage. Play the Savannah. I like to green suns before I play the Teague, just so it doesn't get caught. Hmm. It's kind of annoying. We will get nothing and pass. Hmm, okay. Okay, I don't want to play the Teague just yet, but having the sword's quite nice, especially with Veil. Happy to get rid of it. Okay. Hmm. 
Sadly, the lonely flagstones here is a little bit awkward with the veil. But a lot of the removal that they have won't line up too well. We have one more turn to draw land, potentially. Oof. Merc's hide. We have, yeah, like a, a sword, but just a little bit too late. I didn't think of the, uh, the Merc Tide either. Maybe it was worth endurancing earlier on. <laughs> Triumph. Yeah. Tough. Definitely, like, the big reason, I guess, for keeping in some more swords is sideboard cards. That could be pretty detrimental. Yeah, tough. Very cool to see uh, Triumph running around MCGO. All right, on the play. Um, double one's hand. Otherwise, the man is rough, so I'm not a big fan of keeping this. Okay. Okay. Keep bottom the ramen app and just go all in on the combo. Stage play mocks. Yeah, a little bit fair sometimes. A little bit too fair, but... That's what we signed up for. Opponent mulligans to five cards. Probably pitching a stage. Play Caracas. It's probably the land I want to get rid of if we do have to crop. I guess that means we probably want to go for Wasteland here to take them off the artifact. Hey Thin, very cool to see you. I'm good. It is late and we're not doing too well, but look. Sometimes Wasteland just gets there. Uh, the Veil's good. The Teague is good. The Force of Figures are great. The Deafening Silence is great. The Swords can come out. The Shadow Spear can come out. Uh, Caracas. I don't think there'd be like a Shieldred deck. So yes. Loam. Ramanap. Soul Guide. Collector Oof. Maybe the Extra Endurance. Knight. Night. Oh, doorkeepers are also pretty sweet. Make some trims. Uh, 
Uh, yes, please. <laughs> really greedy, but hell yeah. A lot of turn one interaction. Saga, can we please see a Chrome Mox? Close. Well, that's it. Um, yeah, I'm happy to get rid of these. Get rid of the Dried Arbor a little bit. A little bit. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Could I could I take a draw? Is there a reason? I think we can actually take a draw here. See, find a green card. Nice. And then go fl flagstones, mox, pitch, dried arbor, deafening silence. Pass with force on your two two things. We can't veil this turn, but hopefully that's okay. Okay. Hey Pigeon, this looks to be mono black storm, I want to say. This is game two. Uh, game one, they had a pretty bad mulligan and we got two. Just get there with a wasteland on turn one. Interesting. A land would be perfect. Not the land we want, but that's fine. Yeah, maybe the green suns was a little bit better. Like we could use it to go and get a, a Teague or Oof. I'm also happy to take this and see what they do second main. I kind of want to be able to hold up the veil here for the whole turn. Okay. Okay, that's pretty cool. Doorkeep has been okay in the spots where I've wanted it so far and testing it across a variety of decks. The issue is you can't really tutor for it. So like we had it, we had two of them in our opener against DNT in match one. First one got Thought Seize turn one, second one got Swords turn two. So that's going to definitely happen. But I find that like it's not always there when you want it. And typically against the decks that you want it against, you want it in the opening turns. I think it's still really strong. Like it's a, a decent hate bear against Doomsday. It's really good against DNT typically. Nice. They could have, oh, they, they could have. Like dark ritual into opposition agent, but I'm happy to play into that. Okay, they don't. Could crop for Saga, can also just crop for Dark Depths and kill them quicker. But close.
Hey, DZ. MTG or practice, I would say either card, uh, a rental service like Card Hoarder. I would definitely recommend Card Hoarder because they backed me. But yeah, I would look up the subscription services where you can pay up to X amount um, and then rent that amount of ticks. I believe Card Hoarder allow you to pay for the service in ticks, which you can get if you do well enough with the decks as well. So that's always pretty sweet. So you can kind of go all like infinite with that as well. Okay, we went two three, pretty rough. I think um I think sideboarding is definitely something I could I could work on, um, and just maybe like a little bit better in in mulligan decisions. Sometimes when to just go for things through a daze, but yeah, what do we go down to? Rug Delver, Death and Taxes, and four or five color got up against mono black and got up against four color lands which is cool i didn't run the surveil land because i wanted the extra savannah as a untapped source um and because i'm running the two flagstones getting the lush you don't get the benefits of it because you shuffle after flagstones but i could definitely see it in the deck there were a few times tonight where potentially searching for it when we weren't doing too much would have been pretty nice because there are a few a few good hits especially with loam so yeah i think you could definitely run a, a lash here um i just didn't want to have too many additional like tapped lands but that's that's really it i think that potentially lush is just the better savannah number three but i did like having the extra untapped source um but yeah like you could like you could definitely just run the one endurance i like to run two because i find a lot of the the graveyard decks online are a little bit weak to endurance so having the extra copy is good with once upon a time and then it's also decent against delva so kind of axes swords plowshares five to six but that's about it that's gonna be me it is 11 20 p.m uh i'll be back thursday night with maverick Back to Mav and probably back to punishing Mav and see how it's going. Uh, I really want to play Morlock, so I think that uh, yeah, punishing will be cool to look back on. I also have a very cool uh, new donation deck list from Patron that Maverick Joe, which looks into the new car that gives counters to other creatures when you um, play a land, which is called uh, Bristly Bill which should be pretty sweet. Um, this card, I feel like, could be built around pretty well. Um, obviously, save some of your creatures potentially from an oncoming um, Orcish Bowmaster. So, yeah, pretty keen to see how that goes. Might even stream that on Thursday night, honestly. So, uh, I'm going to see who else is streaming. A big thank you to those who came in and followed. Very much appreciate you. And to those who always come in and watch, Thank you very much. I hope you're all having a great week. And Tagores is playing some Legacy, which is always cool. But yeah, I think there's some definitely small tweaks. Like I think Lush is probably like let's let's quickly have a look. So like I think Lush should definitely be over the Savannah. Um, and then I think that also Haywire might is a great. Uh, trigger for force number three. All right. Take care. Catch you next time.